Welcome back guys. Hopefully at this point you finished modifying your case to add the extra buttons and make room for the bigger screen. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to tap into the original controller board, add extra buttons to it, wire all of those up to a Teensy board, and program that so that it can give input to our Raspberry Pis. First we're going to remove a few things from the board including the screen and the speaker that we're not going to be using. On the other side, from about this line down, uh, we're going to remove all the components, including this metal piece. Uh, these sort of staple looking things, leave those on because they're actually bridging some traces on the other side that we're going to be using. After we're done removing everything, we'll cut it to be about 5.5 centimeters at its thickest point, which falls right at the top of this screen connector. The best way that I've found to remove chips like this is to just put a big glob of solder on both sides that covers all the pins. And that way you can heat up the entire side at the same time and lift it off. This is about what you should have at this point. Uh, we'll come back later and clean up some of this excess solder so that when we add our X and Y buttons they can lay flat. Uh, this is a desoldering braid. You can get one for a couple bucks on Amazon or Radio Shack. And the way you use it, you take the tip of your soldering iron and press it up against whatever spot you want to remove solder from and kind of rub it around and it'll wick the solder off. Once you think you've got everything cleaned off and it feels smooth enough, go ahead and stick it into the front of the case with all the buttons and make sure that it feels right. This next part is just kind of a pain in the butt. We need to scrape off several of these traces and solder wires to them so we can tap into the buttons. And then we'll need to scrape off some of the traces down here and bridge them so we can create a shared ground. Check out the description, there should be a link to a blog post where I'll put some high resolution images that are labeled so you know which trace goes to which button. Alright, so it's not very pretty, but you can see that I bridged the bit of wire that was sticking out right here uh, with these two traces right here, and then I put a bridge right here between these two traces. What that does is it makes it so that the ground half of each of our buttons, they're all connected to a single ground, um, so then we just have one ground wire to attach to our Teensy board. The more thin and flexible ones you can get, the better, um, and it'll make it a lot easier to track where they're going if you can get them all different colors. Now these connections are pretty delicate, so what I recommend doing is taking a voltmeter and check resistance from one end of each wire to the corresponding button pad. And once you've verified that you have a good connection on each one, go ahead and hot glue them down so that you don't accidentally break them. Now we're going to set up our X and Y buttons. So first, take some electrical tape and cover that area. Now take your board and put it back in the front of your case, and then take something like a sharpie and mark exactly where your buttons are. Now we're going to create our contact points by using some copper tape. 
Uh, so first, uh, we're gonna do a shared ground connection between the two buttons. So on the other side, they should overlap so that they share a connection. For the other half, uh, make it really close to but not touching the ground connection. So when our buttons actually come down, they'll bridge this connection. So now you can put this back in the case and use your voltmeter again just to make sure that you got everything positioned properly. Now all that we have to do is connect a few wires to the ground and X and Y buttons. Finally, we just need to connect one of these grounds to this ground so that they all share this one wire. So there we go, we've tapped into all the buttons on the front, added two new contact points for the X and Y buttons, and then on the back we've created a single shared ground connection that we can use. We'll be wiring up to the ground pin here, and then it inputs 0 through 11. Uh, it's going to go up, down, left, right, A, B, X, Y, start, select, um, and then when we add our L and R buttons later, they'll go to 10 and 11. Alright, so now that we're done wiring everything up, all that we need to do is plug this into a computer and program it. Check out the description for a link to the blog post that goes along with this video. It'll have links to the Arduino software, the Teensy drivers so that Arduino can program it, as well as an Arduino project I wrote that'll turn button presses into keyboard events. So hopefully at this point you've got yourself a fully programmed Teensy board ready to go, um, and you can plug it into any computer, or in my case, a Game Boy Zero, uh, and give it a try. So yeah, if you run into any problems on this part of the guide or anything else, uh, feel free to stop by the forums. There's a lot of people on there already sharing some great ideas and advice. In the next part, I'll show you guys how to mount the screen in the Pi Zero itself, as well as how to reuse these screw posts that you hopefully saved from the first guide. So keep an eye out for that, and I'll see you guys next time.